think what it was is I think it was that it was the the following of that Chappelle belief. It was like, well, she was fourteen, she should have got out the way. It was like motherfucker, what? Yeah, and, and That's this not the episode here. kind of do, like this episode yeah. like explores that rhetoric in a way that I don't yeah. feel one hundred percent comfortable with at points. Like I feel like it sticks the landing at the tail end when Huey gives like the speech, but like in the middle of the episode where it does the thing where like, oh, Riley's telling off uh, Tom Dubois, and then yeah. like Huey I was waiting does okay. the thing. Get to this. Riley's carrying the sign, and Tom Dubois comes up to him. He's like, hey, you know, I see you guys, you know, have this sign. I hope you don't, you know, not feeling too too bad about, you know me having to uh, uh, go up against him. And then Riley goes off on this whole thing about like, oh, okay, you know, like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, but what about, uh, he's like, you're going off on R. Kelly for all this, but <laughs> what about, um, you know, isn't that girl old enough or something like that? And then he says another line about like, oh, Just well, you way. know, I accidentally peed into bed when I was little, so what about that? And it's one of those things where it's like, I can tell Riley's supposed to be the eight-year-old kid who's not really, like, making a good point, da, da, da. But then the way the scene ends, where, like, Tom Dubois is, like, yeah. trying to get a word in edgewise, and he's like, huh? Uh, uh, yeah. uh, and he's being, like, like blindsided um, somehow. I saw piss and coming, then, I move. She saw piss yeah, coming, exactly. she stayed. Yeah, exactly. She stayed. <laughs> no, <it's, laughs> yeah. Mr. Dubois, and why you should I have to lock the, niggas up for Kelly Allen just for that? Yeah, and, and then Huey yeah. says, like, oh, you just got owned by an eight-year-old. And I was like, oh, <laughs> put the brakes. Did he? Did he? he, he got, or no, did no, Riley okay. just go off and not allow I, him to I'm, say I'm, anything? I'm right like, with you. Sorry, storyteller, go ahead. I'll let you go. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, I think like, one of my critiques of the Boondock, just generally, and this episode is no stranger to it, it is, like, obsessed with trying to, like, emasculate Tom or just trying to kind of, like, you mm. know, or, like, just th some form of understanding emasculate, just kind of re, like, put down Tom. And, like, for some reason, and I, I, I get why it's supposed to be, oh, yeah, he's, Tom, he's the Oreo, the Don quote, Lemon quote, analog. Yeah. yeah, like, you play on that. But, like, sometimes, it, and this is what, ugh, this is just a, Sometimes the Boondocks' message gets muddied in its approach yeah. to how it does yeah. what it does. Like, I know yeah. what it's trying to say here. Like, obviously, the scene is supposed to be, like you said, he's eight, he's dumb, he's understanding the world. Like, for, oh, yeah, like, like I pee on the bed all the time. Should I go to jail? Right? It's it's a dumb, right. silly point. I get it. But it's the way, like, they punctuate these things. So, again, it's like Huey going, mm -hmm. oh, he just got beat by an eight-year-old. Yeah, like, Huey's the voice the voice of reason on the show, and he's being treated like, <laughs> you got got. It's like, did he? Like, what? Yeah. You know? yeah, no, to, to, to your point, Storyteller, I think the emasculation comes, it comes more from the sense that, not that Tom got beat, because I, I feel similar to both of you, where it's like, I don't feel like he won. What happened was... A child steamrolled the conversation and left, and you ex and you let someone tell you and that you, you just lost. let it happen. You you yeah. yeah you let it happen, and it wasn't even a case of just like I I think it would have played differently if Tom was the adult and was basically like I'm not gonna argue with a, a child about about. <clears throat> where it's like I, I'm not gonna argue like... with a child about right and wrong when your you know prefrontal yeah. cortex is barely developed, but <laughs> in case, where it's like an eight year old steamrolled the conversation, walked away, and the other one said you lost. You don't have to. And the thing is, what emasculates him is he agrees. He agrees that he lost. Mm. That means but he it, wasn't it, as strong in his point as he should have been because that's and, how he but, also, but also loses about this the legal case. But I also think about this too, like Huey is the voice of reason and makes a very good point at the tail end of the episode where he's like, all uh, right, here's what's going on right now and here's what needs to be said. But earlier in the, in, in this part right here, in fact, before Riley like butts in, like uh, Tom Dubois is like, hey, you know, I hope you don't mind after to do this case. And Riley's just like, hey, you do what you gotta do. Like he's just unaffected by the fact that R. <laughs> Kelly is someone who peed on a 14 year old. He's just like, ah, do what you gotta do, whatever, whatever you know. <laughs> it's like, uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's you like, know, it it's, just feels it's, so weirdly characterized for his character, you know? I mean, the, mm. the whole case in and of itself, it's one of those things, like, thinking back to that time period and even we were talking about, like, Chappelle and whatnot, I'm like, it's it's a funny joke, the whole, like, oh, just get out the way, you know, how old is, is 15, really? I think it's, ha, ha, it can ha, be funny be as a, it's a good ha, ha. Ha. Yeah, like it's it's funny, haha. But under any sort of critical scrutiny, it immediately falls apart, and it's immediately yeah, because it goes like, like, "Nigga, what awful. you trying to say?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's just like yeah. it's like, "Ha ha, ha!" Like you get two laughs, Ooh. and you're like, "Ha ha, that's funny." Because if I got peed on on move, and then you realize this was a child, like any, Wait, any sort yeah, of critical what thought applied to trying it. To defend it. Is, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, as long it, as the child who doesn't know enough about life is consenting, it should be fine. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know? Yeah. So at first it kind of seems like, oh, okay, maybe, uh, you know, Tom Dubois is going to win this case. But then it kind of goes back to uh, Adam West. I mean, yeah, Adam West's uh, lawyer's defense. And he brings up the, this is the part where it, it, the show kind of loses me again, where he brings up the 14-year-old girl. Uh, again, mo- most prominent female character so far on the show, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And he's like, oh, let's interview the 14-year-old. <laughs> Yeah, let's interview the 14-year-old oh, girl. And she's like, oh, yes. yeah, I was fine with him peeing on me. If I didn't like it, I would have got out the way. And it's like, oh, <laughs> Riley's like, oh, I told you. Ha, ha. And it's sort of like, ha, ah, what are we doing, Boondocks? Why are you, why are you framing it like this? That, that scene is also kind of messy for me because, forget her name. I think it was Jill Talley who voices Sarah Dubois. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, God. I, you, I looked it up know? the other day. I forget. Yeah, it's Jill something, right? I think it's Jill Tally or something. I, I yeah, think yeah. I, it is. She voices I'm pretty sure the little girl. girl. Oh my god! Why did they do oh, that? Oh wow! And so, Wait, like, what? It's so awkward. Yeah, no, and so, no, that's and so obviously like are they this you said in the movie goes it's just like yeah that's Jill we, we just couldn't find anyone right and so a lot of the time oh. right when you hear black women in the Boondocks it's a white woman playing that's ridiculous right? <laughs> why would you do that yeah Wait, no, it's, no it's that, really that's bad. even weirder because really, I'm pretty sure Naima Funk is in this <laughs> episode. Like, and remember the skinny the black girl from, um, from Whose Line? And what, Wild and Regi- Out? I'm sorry, Regina I'm, King couldn't do an extra voice? It basically sounded like her anyway. <laughs> that, that's... No, I, I feel like... It was crazy. I feel like Regina, getting Regina was, I can understand. For me, it's like, you guys had some, like, real, like, voice, up, black female voice. Like, they had, uh, what's it called? They had Miss Kitty, the one that played, uh, Trixie in American Dragon. Yeah, they yeah, had, yeah. They uh, had, uh... Lauren Hill Whoa. Um, was gonna play Caesar at one point. Huh. Um, they had Alicia Keys. Yeah, they had. There was someone else. So I'm there's no on, excuse. But they had like they had options. Yes, yeah. so, that's yeah, it. There was no excuse. You know what's even crazier not- is I thought um, before I look because I had to look up that it was and you were right it was uh, Jill Talley. I when I first heard it, I'm like bitch was that Tara Strong because I know she shows up in a couple episodes too because yeah. I thought it, it sounded like Tara when it said I told you about messing with them white girls I'm like yeah. bitch is that Tara I know a white woman when but, I hear one <laughs> but oh, oh I, but I apparently to not she voiced the little girl I like, exactly. I, like, I, know I, I wanted a white to circle back on that real one. quick I just think it's so funny like looking at this whole case because like the reality of the fact is you know they're framing it in this way of like oh if this 14 year old girl didn't want it she would have just moved out the way but then it's like it's so funny learning what learning what we know now of like R. Kelly had these women in fucking compounds you know not letting them leave yeah. uh, uh, making them you know uh, make videos under duress saying that like oh uh, everything is fine you know so like why Watching back this episode, it's like, yeah, that's not how it went down, guys. 